Kuzma. Build up their draft. You can go for a lot of safe lane heroes to be aggressive with a Winter Wyvern as well. So many options for Palos. They could try the Luna themselves if they wanted to. They could fall back to the TA if they feel confident. Like, there's no direct counter pick here. The lane against Mars might not be as smooth, but once you get, like, level 3, it should be fairly secure if Palos does want to play that again. And even something like Palos says, Gyrocopter could be really nice there. You have really good magic damage, deal with Mars, you can clear out waves very fast. Omega pick up the Wind Ranger themselves now, so they steal it away from Jamesy, looking to turn it back. Could be our mid, could be our support. It's still fairly open. They wouldn't know the mid matchup. So I think they have a bit of an edge there in kind of flexing the Wind Ranger as a support. But it's a really early Wind Ranger pick. I think there's nothing in particular that synergizes, synergizes with Wind Ranger here outside of maybe Shackles to Spear or Spear to Shackles. That could be one. But otherwise, there's nothing really that makes a Wind Ranger pop too much. Yeah. I mean, I guess against the, like, if this is like a pause four Wind Ranger, it does okay against the Wyvern because you can win run away from the Arctic Burn, I guess. So maybe they're, they're just thinking lanes right now. Perhaps it's just a nice kind of, nice kind of way of harassing without having to take too much harassment back. Morphling also being the pickup. So now, this explains a bit more now. So we've got the Wind Ranger Morphling combination. OB Neon, they do not even think about it. They go straight into the counter, into the Phantom Lancer. But it does seem like Omega Esports are relying on having that Wind Ranger Morph combo now. So the the whole Wind Run with the with the Morphling, having those two charges, just kind of making him invincible. But you've got to get to yeah. that stage before it really looks powerful. It takes a lot of form for the Morphling to leverage that Wind Ranger form really well. So it's going to take some cooking up. Even if you hit the Ags timing first, like you rush it, it doesn't feel like it's enough. You will need some damage items on hand, maybe just a casual Crystallis, it's a Daedalus would really help the cause there, and leveraging that near invulnerability state for the morph. The Phantom Lancer as a counter to the Morphling is great. There are ways for the Wind Ranger to track the PL. You can't dispel off Focus Fire. So even if you doppelgang out, the Wind Ranger will still be able to constantly attack the real one, which is one thing Omega has in dealing with PL, not much else. Like you have God's Rebuke, to melt some of the illusions. Down the line, you'll have the shard on spear, so you can kind of just take a guessing game on trying to spear out the PL, I suppose. Try to drag him back plus an illusion and figure it out from there. But you don't have the direct counters. You don't have the ember coming through. It could still fit in the draft. It hasn't... Oh, it's been banned out by Omega. So I think the only option left would be... If they are going to run the Wind Ranger 4, Elder Titan 5... They could try for a Leshrac, but that's also banned out by Neon, so most of the options are gone. Like, there's not much wave clear left. Perhaps a Puck could be one way. And that one's not as direct of a counter, but it does give you some good AoE hold to deal with PL. Okay. Final ban out, OB Neon. See if they feel the same way. They're going to get rid of the Invoker for now. You brought up that Puck lockdown. Could be the option. And there you go, John. Very well done. Very well done. This is why we pay you the big bucks, John. Very good <laughs> prediction. It's the only one left. Like, it's either the Puck or I think a Quap could also, could have also worked out. But we've seen Quap less often than Puck. So the Puck is much more up there. It plays well with Mars. You've got a good way to break Dream Coil early on with Dream Coil Spear. In fact, Dream Coil Gale Force could also theoretically work... But that's like Dream Coil on the edge. Like you have to catch him on the edge and have the Gale Force <laughs> shove them out. So it's not very reliable. Mm. It is a synergy that can come out, I, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the Spear is just better overall. But, <laughs> you know, I, I like your thinking, John. I might have to try that in a, in a future pub. <laughs> <Over in Eon. laughs> I used Gale Force in a pub recently, by the way. I can't remember who my... My teammate was, but they reckoned I ruined the team fight for them. I was very upset. It was a great Gale Force I had, John. It was an Ursa, in fact. The Ursa thinks I ruined the team fight with a Gale Force. I don't know. Uh, you know how Chorus are. You won that game. They always. Yeah, you still won, so in the end, it doesn't matter, right? You did your job. Neon, I... 
I did have like 15 deaths that game, John. I'm not going to lie. It was a pretty bad game. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an average game for me, Mike. So you're yep. fine. You're fine. You know, 15 deaths. It would be an achievement, though, if you did get the milk award. <laughs> I mean, something <laughs> like 0 20 and win. So, not you know, quite. that's something to aim for. Not quite. We'll get there, Mike. Still, Neon, close out with the DK. So that's, it's just a stable mid to handle the puck. Gives you good tempo with the dragon form. This is in stark contrast to when we saw Omega take that DK off lane. You think DK mid with already team fight coming through from your supports and from your offlane with the Darkseer. The DK has a lot more breeding room. You can just focus on building farm. You can go for a bit of a scaling for with the Ags. You're not going to get completely bullied out by the puck. It's also not a very easy lane, the DK. So there's a little bit of back and forth. I think Omega does have some good scaling on hand. The issue is, will they be able to handle the PL come late game? Once Heart's up, once the durability is there for Palos, your key in holding down the PL is still basically Arena and Dream Coil, and it's just not very reliable, right? Like, to an extent, you could maybe consider it Wind Ranger and Focus Fire, but you don't tend to go damage items on that support. So it's going to be hard for the Wind Ranger to just fig kind of hold down the PL by herself. She can help signal as to which a real PL is, but whether or not you're going to be able to fall through is a different question. So I think. Omega has to play fairly fast with this draft, hit that good timings on her Morphling, hit the Ags if they want to, and just kind of run from there, prevent Palace from being big in this game. Because once that PL is up and running, your answers are limited. Okay. So it it sounds like you're saying to me OB Neon has a superior draft. Am I correct in saying that, John? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you've got the scaling on hand, yeah. Okay, fair enough. Omega, I mean, it's been three losses today, John. I hate to see a team go four losses in a row. We'll see if Omega can turn their night around or whether OB Neon are going to leave 2-0 themselves. Props to OB Neon. I mean, there's been a lot of doubts around their lineup, but so far looking pretty damn good. Very, very impressive stuff. We'll head into it. Yeah, Game. Been... Go on, John. What is it? You've got something to they've say. They've been on the up and up. They've yeah. been on the up and up. Yeah, they've lost their big players. Pretty much all of them except Enry. And remember... There was talk between them and Boom Yopaj accusing Enryu of being the CEO, kicking everyone, coming in, taking their jobs, getting them out. John Uel even <laughs> sneaking on the keyboard. It's like, it's Enryu. He kicked me from Neon. You know, all that friendly, uh -oh. friendly banter. Oh, oh hero. Very, very good. Lover boy. <laughs> hero doesn't know. Hero was disconnected the whole time. He probably has no idea what they're, what they're tipping him for. But everyone knows. Poor old hero. Oh, goodness me. Give the tip over to Palos. The problem is he can only tip one. There you go. His team's going to back him up. <laughs> uh, Palos with a question mark as well. You got to love it. Southeast Asia, man. Rambulans, man. This is what we love to see. We do love a good Rambula. Thirty seconds. We really do. I'm, I miss doing the whole voice thing for the, for the Rambula. I think people oh, like yeah. I mean, it was, you know, looking back, it was pretty badly recorded. You know, maybe in the future we'll have to do a better recording, but I think people enjoyed it. I think. <laughs> so, so Palace is accusing Abeng of asking for the tips, and Hero's like, uh, two goats together, you can't, you can't fight against it, you know, two greatest of all times. The battle begins. <laughs> Zenki's well, like, Enryu... Later we'll play, you, you, later we'll go out and you can use my grab. So he's offering it. He's <laughs> offering it. <laughs> Thank you for offering the translations, John. Um, you know, if the analysis fails one day, I, I guess you could always be a translator. I mean, with the amount of orchard that's going on, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. Bot lane, John. Oh, They're cheeky. clearing up the creep way. Free farm. Not a single deny from Prince. So, one wave gone, gonna have to see us <laughs> under creep wave. Not fun. At the least, Morphling has ba high base damage to it. It's not too much of a struggle to get creeps. He is gonna find perfect CS as well. But this just kind of keeps that lane equilibrium in check. And that's what you want to see with that aggressive duo from Hustler and from Enry, right? Like, you've got Earth Spirit, you've got Dark Tear. You want to use that Iron Shell. You want to use the mobility on the Earth Spirit to just build up a massive lead at the start. It's quite a clever way as well of just making it so Zenki can't actually take advantage of this Elder Titan at level 1, right? Because this is a already at level 1 that the Elder Titan is just so damn powerful with that Astral Spirit, but being able to fear creep waves like that instantaneously is going to remove a lot of that advantage away here from Zenki. So very smart plays from OB Neon. 
Then now they'll just set up the creep equilibrium underneath their own tier 1 tower. In the meantime, we will have a look at the other lanes while we still have a chance. Because you've got P.O.L.s in the mid lane against James. You see the DK versus the Puck matchup. Seems like it is going to be favoring the Puck, at least for now. But I imagine this should be pretty even kind of trading lane as the levels go up. Yeah, you're not going to be under too much threat from James. See, once you hit level 2 Dragon, Dragon Blood, you're going to be able to hold the lane just well. Pjolds is going to have an advantage in terms of runes, though, as long as he holds on to the orb usage to secure runes. That's something he can definitely sort of make make use of. And even Zenki swinging around for the water runes. So they don't want to give James the access to any of that. There's no bottle yet, but certainly that added region would help. And he's just going to have to play without it for a bit. But he hits level 3, so in the end, you don't really care. Certainly not. not an astral spirit coming all the way into the mid lane, so... Really taking advantage of that Astral Spirit here from Zenki, just getting as much bonus damage as he could possibly get. I suppose times are tough right now for the Elder Titan, considering the nerfs that just occurred. You've got to do what you're going to do to get that bonus damage up. Poor old James, you're going to contribute to that bonus damage. In the meantime, of course, top lane as well. You've got Palos and Abing against Van and Hero. This lane, John, do you, do you feel like they're going to be able to slow down and shut down Palos, or should he have a decent time? Could be fairly decent. You can apply some good harassment with a Wind Ranger and Power Shot. Issue is that's also going to shove out the wave a bit. And you mentioned a back and forth earlier, Mike, with the Arctic Burn to dodge, uh, Wind Run to dodge Arctic Burn. I think in that case, Abeng can just focus on Van. So even if the Wind Ranger doesn't get hit, it's not going to stop the Mars from being hit. And that percent burn will hurt the Mars a lot more. So you're still getting some good value there. It's a slower lane. I think level 3 could be a good spike if Hero goes for a 1-1-1 build. Shackles into Spear could be one way to handle that PL. And level 1 Doppelganger is a very long cooldown. So once you see that committed, you can kind of just Prince. line up for some aggression. So much damage with the Tubble Iron Shell. Especially once Enry is hit level 3, which he has. He's very, very careful with his HP. The Astral Spirit will come in again from Zenki, but his impact in this bottom lane just hasn't been there. Now, I think it goes back to them just clearing out that bottom wave immediately before the waves even met. Which makes it so Zenki just can't really get a, a grip of this bot lane. Yeah, they're not getting aggression out as you'd want with ET. At the same time, Prince is still finding CS. So 27 to 2, still basically free farm under the tier 1. But the impact our pause five is having is not that big, and I think that's the big issue. Like your morphling will still have a good time, but your earth, uh, your elder titan needs that early presence. He wants early kills, and that's how he scales up to get his quick items. Zenki's just sitting around with brown boots right now. He just has nothing to do here. Very very tough time indeed. Can't win a war without money. A bang, top lane gonna be fine the speed did not land there from van meanwhile shackle is out palos trying to get very aggressive but he does have the cold embrace it's no problem for the peel palos eventually gonna back off jukes out the spear but now a bing has to take it and in the end he's gonna be just fine anyway no issues whatsoever they have enough sustain does feel like omega might be able to really apply the pressure now in fact you look at the cs board and palos he he hasn't had the greatest time in the world they could certainly keep trying to press this advantage. I suppose a Bing has the cold embrace up again, so chances are you aren't going to have enough damage anyway. This is still an important lane for Omega to find a sort of win. Like the PL doesn't flash farm too quick. You can kind of leverage your illusions and just use Phantom Rush to jump from camp to camp. But you have to be careful. If they do manage to land a spear, if you had your Wind Ranger around with a power shot, that might have been a kill on Topalos. Bot lane, Hustler again there with Enryu, just creep skipping, but at the same time, they're just clearing the creep wave with these iron shells. Just all the creeps going the way of OB Neon. That being said, they, they are making the, the sacrifice that Prince is going to have so much CS himself. I, I don't think Prince, Prince has been missing many uh, many creeps right here, John. He's 43 and 2. So you are kind of banking on your, on your position 1 Palos to, to be able to carry you through. And Prince is going to be coming into this game, too, with essentially free farm. He is. And this early spike 
for our morph is really gonna allow him to snowball. First blood finally being found out. Yeah, mid lane. James, you have the assistance of a Bing there, and that was more than enough to get rid of the puck. They have the dragon form for quite a while longer. In fact, they even have a siege creep. So it might be time to get some decent damage off that mid tier one tower. And to make matters even better, James is gonna get a regen room bottled up. So you definitely wanna try and apply that pressure if you can. They're just going to start hammering in. Zanki will make his presence known. You've got Coil. You might be able to lock him down here, but Jamesy is pretty darn tanky. Shackle's not going to land. Or rather, the power shot did land, but the damage just is not there. Hero is going to have to back off. They already got Zanki. Peoles. He's going to try and just chip away at James, but again, he has the regen rune, and it's just healing him all the way back up. On the bright side, at least they, they weighed out the dragon form now, so... The tier one's not going to take too much damage here for Omega. Yeah, they managed to get a good defense out. While that rotation happens, though, they lose out on Prince. He just gets chomped by enemy and the damage is overwhelming. And they even lose Van up top. So a 0 for 4 on Obi Neon side. Managing to start snowballing their lanes. And we were just talking about how well the Morphling lane was going, all things considered. Losing him that early is pretty big uh, boon for Obi Neon. And just allows him to keep that aggression up in mid. Yeah, Jamesy, I mean, he's just throwing stuns out. Not really able to threaten them too much, but just being annoying with the stunners. Top lane again, Van. Gonna try and find Palos with a spear, but won't bother throwing one out. Still think all things being said and done, Omega, they may just be satisfied with how well their Morphling's farming. May just not be too concerned with everything else on the map right now, as again, Prince is just completely free farmed. Peoles, mid lane, run into Hustler, but oh, does he really want to chase him down? That doesn't look like it. I mean, you've got the coil, but I, I don't think Peoles would have the damage on his own. Not for an Earth Spirit. You'd just leave him be. Yeah, and for Omega, this kind of passive play might hurt them. They do have level 6 up on Van, so I think they could line up for a top rotation. It's had to look bot. Yeah, they got the coil off. Back wall is there. He is still alive in the search. Not quite going to be enough, Ooh. but they got peels. I, I can't say that's worth it for Omega. Like, you, you got the darks here, but you lost your mid puck. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive sacrifice to make. It's still nice for Prince to get the kill. But the Puck is also a momentum-based hero. It does want to farm up fast. You want your Blink Yules up really quick, or the Travels, depending on how you feel you need to be on the map. And that kind of rotation, again, you're targeting a Darkseer. You're not locking in the PL. I think the top rotation would have been much more beneficial. Playing with Arena Dream Coil to just kill off Palos would have been a bigger target. And it slows down that defusal timing. It slows down the Manta or SNY, depending on what route you go and just prevents that counterplay into the Morphling. Because once you have Diffusal and a couple of stats items up on Palos, the Morphling is not going to be able to man fight. You know, he can't just stand there and get hits off. Once his man is drained, he's going to be under threat. Mid lane, who have they got? They're going to try into the DK. Arena down, but he's got an Invis rune. Under sentry, however, still dropping, but not low enough yet. Magnetize in, Hustler. He's going to look to turn this one around. Zenki, he's dropping low as well. He is going to fall, and now Hero, he'll be chased as Jamesy. He is still alive. They do end up finding Hustler. Shackle's not going to latch. They commit the Dream Coil. They are still trying, but Jamesy is just not dying. Eventually, they get him with the orb. And Hero, even with the focus fire, Gonna try and go after a Bing. Peels, back in, still having a look around for this Wyvern. They are gonna spot him, but the Cold Embrace is up. How long do you wanna try for this? Well, it looks like they won't have to try for long. Peels, who gets it done. That's a big turnaround play from Omega. They find really big kills, especially killing off James E.A.D. Uh, prevent that mid-tier one push from coming through with the dragon form so they save that objective holding on to their side of the river and they manage to get prince to rotate up top so you're giving more space out to the morph it is a e-blade rush for prince just going for the burst damage on hand it's not going to be too long till that's up although peots well silence oh it's not the mark hustler he got it it won't be long enough though in fact the stomp there from zenki is going to put a stop to the ob neon anyway Jamesy, he's still going to try and chip away that top, uh, rather mid tier one. Shackle is there. Won't be enough. Be neon. Very confident in how tanky Jamesy is. Even with hardly any items right now. 
That mid tier one tower, it has been dropped very low. Jamesy, he might go ahead and try to finish it off with the Siege Creep now. Just tank the tier one tower hits. You know, they are going to glyph up. Should be enough. Oh, they have the Cold Embrace. Never mind. They'll keep going, but the Stomp is there. Van, he's going to rotate with the Arena Spear out. This time around, they should have the damage. Shackle there to lock him down. They'll have enough. A bang. He's still around trying to find a curse, but there is no angle for him. Now Mega will find two. Yeah, again, doing a good job of holding on to that mid-tier one. They understand how important that objective is. And with Van finally taking some early activity, the arenas can set up quite nicely with a stop. So Neon, I think it's their time to maybe tune things down a bit. They're not quite ready to have Enri show up with a big back wall yet. The wall is still down for a bit longer. The Ags for our Dark Seer is almost up though. They will try to roll around. The Iron Shell is doing a ton of damage. They just can't fully commit. These are highly mobile heroes on the side of Omega, and Piolz is sniping some stacks. My Silence Hustler, he's got Piolz for a second, but again, the Silence not quite Ooh. enough. The Orb's gonna be there. Well, they do force out the Dream Coil, but it's a pretty low cooldown anyway. Hustler, I mean, he's been very on point with these Silences. A few more levels up in that pool, and as, as this park, you might start to get very concerned. Yeah, it's... Not quite long enough for the burst, but even just a second longer might give them that window to really get the kills. So you might need something to counteract that on PLs. Maybe a casual yields down the line to dispel off that silence. Looks like he is going for the Witchblade first, as he does have that uh, Blitz Knuckle lined up. So should be up soon, amping up the damage for Puck. But some protection will be necessary. Very even game so far, Mike. 13 minutes in, 6 to 7, 1k lead for Omega. Prince still having the freest time up top, not contested. He is being monitored now in that jungle. There are some forward wards and Ob Bang is in the area, but they don't really have enough to handle the Morphling yet. They do have the defusal up on Palos with no real stat items yet. He's still fairly vulnerable. A right click trade, and they're just going to take their time here in OB Neon. They are they still Radiance working into those spikes. The Ags is up for Enryu. So double Iron Shell plus 275 HP as well. Much more durable up front. They are mid lane. They're going to find a bang. That'll be a nice target to get started on. But Ooh. on that Arctic Burn, John, you are theoretically flying. Shackles is going to land, but now they might be able to turn. But Ooh. no, a great stomp out. Earth Splitter into the Dream Coil. They aren't going to catch too many, but it won't matter. They've got three targets to go after, and they just blow them up. Really great setup there, Brian Merg Omega. Zenki just doing it for the team. Now Palos has been spotted. He'll try to turn and fight this one out. It's not looking great for him. He'll at least take the puck with him. And is he really going to get out of this? It looks like he actually will. Instead, they'll try to focus on Enryu, but he's taken down the Elder Titan. And he's going to keep chasing down Hero. He will have the shackles. Somehow the Palos gets himself out. That was, that was on the knife's edge for Palos. It was a bit unfortunate in that fight. Enryu did not have the mana to TP mid earlier. He had to walk all the way back to base. If he did have the Dark Seer there for a vac wall while that entire fight was breaking up by the ramp on the upper area of that tier one, could have ended up a bit better for Neon. So they find a pretty decent trade as they do smoke up and they should be able to find a couple more. Prince got to be careful. He's a bit low on HP right now. James oh. is in. Strength Morph was there in time, however, but they back him back anyway. Prince should be all right. Still dropping low, but not quite low enough yet. He'll shock out down a bang. In fact, the neutral creeps, they'll pick up the Wyvern kill. Prince is out of there on the morph though. James, he's still having a look around, but he'll get curled up by Pilos. Meanwhile, on the other side, they've got the Darks here down. Enry to drop. James, he, he's going to try and run now, but he's surrounded by four. He's going to try and run with the pick stick. And he's going to make it out. The blink is there in time. Roll back in, Hustler. Maybe just trying to make sure that Peels cannot keep going after the DK. He'll sacrifice his own life. That's uh I don't think a necessary sacrificial play. It looked like our DK was in the clear. But you know, they ensure that James does get out. And Omega has revealed her hand though. They know the E-Blade's up now. Neon should be able to better prepare themselves for that first. And while if that happens, they just give Palace some more room to farm. The Manta style not too far off, the Yasha basically done. 
So your PL is starting to build into that point where it's going to be a bit more durable. It's going to be harder to burst down. And the answers still reside mainly on PLs. He does have a Witch Blade up. And they could still try to just focus fire the real PL and kind of track him that way. But still a tough situation. Zinki, stunned up. They'll go for the Elder Titan. Thank you back as well. Zinki's gone. That should allow the mid T1 to be opened up here by OB Neon. They've been trying this for quite a while now. This time, they should be able to have their way with it unless they just back off. So deciding maybe not. I mean, they were without a creep wave to be fair. Perhaps they go back now. In the meantime, you've still got a free farming morph. I mean, Prince is having a great old time here. So you, you've still got to be concerned about that. Omega. Uh, they're slightly ahead in terms of net worth, but Prince is going to be pretty darn scary as this game continues. Okay, he's going to be massive. Yasha's almost done him as well, so his stat padding is there. There is a bit of a smoke from Obinion, Pilots, and Hustler. Not quite the duo you'd expect. They are lined up. They could mana burn the Morphling if Prince oversteps, but he will play it safe. Not going to push out that creep wave too far. They might have been smoked under the ward here from the ramp ward. So that would give the info, but they're still in the area. And the scan does spot them out eventually. Very nice scan out there. They still seem to want to go after the PL, but this is a bit of bait because Hustler's right behind. Prince, he's going to be careful. Oh Silence is there. He got the strength morph off, but he's running out of mana real time quick. They'll try to help. In fact, they can't. They've got to leave Prince B. Great scan from OB Neon. To just play the bait with Palos. And I was just complimenting how well... Uh, Prince has been farming this game, but, you know, with that death, Palos, he'll be able to take over. Yeah, he's right on the tails of that Morphling, just about 300 gold behind. So not a massive difference. Um, I am still surprised that both tier ones are standing at 18 minutes in. Both teams have been very disciplined about protecting that. But it does look like Obi Neon's going to be able to line up as Enryu gets that solo kill on Van. So the defense with Arena isn't going to be there. And they could just pressure mid if they want to. But they could. Still choosing not to go after that tier 1 mid yet. I mean, Jamesy, he's got the dragon form going, so I suppose he'll get it done now. I, mean, I, I doubt they're concerned about it getting denied. Like, the, the goal isn't that high to worry about. There'll be another glyph coming out, though. But Jamesy, slowly gonna chip away. Loses the dragon form now, however. Maybe just doesn't want to risk it again. You've got to give credit to Omega. They've done a really fantastic job in holding this tier 1 mid for this long. Like, it's not very often you see that against the Dragon Knight. Yeah, it's... Usually it falls a lot faster. Usually by the first or second Dragon form use, that tower is gone. But Omega understands how important the mid tier 1 is. How much it gives them in terms of the triangle, in terms of their bot jungle, in terms of Roshan as well. So they have been more willing to throw their bodies forward. Did you get some big items flying through now? Blink's coming through for our Wind Ranger and our Puck. So it's going to be easier for them to find the targets to jump in. Easier to pull off the Dream Coil with the Arena set up, following through from that, and basically catching out the, the PL as well. Right? If you can shackle Palos first, you can focus fire him down, and again, you can't topple off the focus fire, so you will always be able to figure out which the real PL is. Roll in, Van. Well spotted. Hustler. Not going to be able to get in range for that roll. They still know he's in the tree line somewhere, but without that initiation, they're not looking to, to go for the blind play. Instead, they might have to try and defend bot, because Prince and Hero going to get started, but the roll does connect. There is no strength morph quite yet. The kickback as well. Prince, he's in a bit of danger. The waveform towards the right side, but they have the cancellations. Prince, he is surrounded again, and he's out of mana once again. He'll try to dig up something. It's only his own grave that he's digging right now, John. There's a sign of OB Neon. They are starting to take over this game number two. That they really are. The network lead isn't that big yet. It's only 1k, but the momentum is starting to ride in their favor. They're killing off Prince more times than it is good for him. And the mid-tier one should finally fall here. No fortified. Well, actually there is a fortify back up. So they could fortify again, but it's not going to last for too long. You have to out. Another nice roll in from Hustler, finding another target here for Henry to take. There goes that T1 mid, finally dropping. Stomp is there, roll in Hustler, very aggressive here, just by himself. Very confident, does land the boulder smash onto PLs, but he's just going to orb away. No problems there for him. 
Jamesy, he was trying to rush in with the Surge to get a Blink Stun, but, but that's not going to work out either. I suppose now with the mid-tier one gone, they can really just start taking over this Radiant Triangle. And in fact, top lane, Van. Oh, Jamesy. Ooh. So close, yet so far. That would have been a really nice solo kill to take for Jamesy. Getting some punishment off for split push, but not quite lining up. Omega do go with a three-man smoke. They haven't put Pialds in. They could use the puck as bait. Again, they've got that blink on Hero, so he can actually initiate with that shackle shot now. They are just sort of blind. No aggressive wards coming out, so this cross into the river is not going to be filled with too much info. Scan out. Enryu does get caught. Nice speed in from Fan. Hero gonna be around as well. He's not down yet though. Enryu, he's pretty Ooh. tanky. Backwall is out. Up to two heroes. And now Palos, he's gonna join the fray. Zenki, he'll be the first casualty of war. It looks like his Palos will just keep rushing forward. They'll try to take him down. He's alright though. The Cold Embrace gonna give him a reset. In the meantime, they are still trying to go after Enryu. But this man will not die. Cold with his curse. Was there, Prince? Still alright, we'll waveform out. In the meantime, they do take down the puck. So Pioz is gone. Shackle, gonna hold down the Dragon Knight, but Hero is gonna have to pay for that with his own life. His Hustler is still trying to chase, but the spear does land and push him back. And they find more. Oh, they can. Jamesy again with the Dragon Tail out, and Enryu will take the kill with the Iron Shell. And it might be Roshan time. Yeah, it certainly does feel that way. No Dream Coil for a little bit, half a minute. No Arena for 20 seconds. That's enough time to clear out the Roche. Really good fight coming out from Neon. And Ryu is not the target you want to jump from a Mega That Dark Seer, Woody Ags up, is just so tanky. Wood, the pipe as well. He blocked a lot of that magic damage on the initiation and just managed to turn. It did take a bit long to get the chase off, but eventually does pay dividends. That Aegis will go to way of Paula. So two lives on appeal. Very hard target to lock in. His his heart's almost done. So he's going to be extra tanky up front. And that's the big spike for Peel. Like, if you can't burst the real guy down, the illusion is just going to chip you to death slowly but surely. If not, at least drain all your mana. And for Morphling, for a puck, for all of these heroes, not having mana makes it very hard for them to play the game. They rely so much on their spell use. They don't have just a front line that can have some presence with just right clicks and some good damage. Uh, Morphling's not quite at that point yet. Bad? Have a look at Enryu. Rain it down, but we've seen this before, John. Enryu did not die last time around. And this time, with just the Mars around, it's not going to be enough. They might try for the Dragon Knight, but Hustler, he's in again. This man is so effective on the Earth Spirit. He'll find Van on the Mars and... I'm just not sure what the idea was there. Jamesy, e, he'll keep chasing. Shackle's not gonna land, Hero. Has some help in there from Peels. They'll have the Wind Ranger drag him up on top of the cliff and... Well, that'll be another kill. Going to the way of Obi Neon eventually. And Enryu will take it once again with the Iron Shells. Man, it's... We just talked about it, Mike. The Darkseer is not the target. The pipe of insight just blocks so much of the magical burst you go in with and just makes it so easy to turn around. He had a wall ready to go, vacuum to interrupt. They're all over the map. They even managed to find p again. Well, I, I, I didn't look there, John, because I didn't think they'd actually catch him. Never mind, though. Apparently they did. So OB Neon, onto the high ground they go. Top tier 3 tower, not going to last very long whatsoever. Van, he's in a position to set up, but he's got no arena up, so it's going to be a little bit challenging to really get this team fight underway. Not continue. No real threat without the puck being around. We've seen this morphling like Prince. Every time he gets jumped by Palos, his mana just instantly just disappears and... You just can't do anything in the team fights. Stomp out, not going to connect. Jamesy, have a look around. He may have spotted Van there. Now he does. They know where the mass is, and they'll move in. They want that initiation tool gone for the side of Omega, and they're going to get it. Make matters worse, Coil was committed. Oh, boy. 
Oh, that was just way off target from Van. Meanwhile, towards the south, they've got Prince down on the Morphling. They'll take down the Mars as well. Things are looking very, very rough. No buybacks available for either of those heroes. Now underneath oh the T4 God. towers. Hustler on a triple kill. He'll get another as well. Jamesy will take the puck kill. And now, why not a Windranger as well? My goodness, just absolute domination from OB Neon. There is no GD call coming, but there's no buybacks jump. And they can slowly just watch their, their base being taken away. Unfortunately for Omega, Tier 2 still stand. So Mega Creeps aren't going to be a factor yet. They're going to have to clear through that from OB Neon's end. And I don't think they really have the speed to clear out Tier 4s with such short respawns. On Omega. So there's some time here for Omega to play. They could look to reset. Try the Arena Dream Coil again. Try the Dream Coil Gale Force. We, we saw that a bit. Yeah. Just that they were trapped in three lines, so they weren't really being pushed away for a break, which is a bit unfortunate. Still, Neon, they're not retreating yet. Very easy resets for them. They're going to have all their spells up relatively soon, so High Ground Siege is not going to be too tough. And they are still protected by the Aegis for a full minute. So Palace has a big window where he can just put his body forward. And he does. Tower has we go. Palos. The high ground. Shotgun is there. Jump in with the puck. But James, he's got the stun off on to Hero. That'll be your wind ranger gone. Arena is out from Van, but you, you just haven't got the follow up. You have not got any form of follow up here with Van. They can still try out to Palos, but he's just so damn tanky. And he still has that Aegis up. Vacuum's there as well, into the wall. And now your Morphling is just disappearing slowly but surely. Prince, he's going to try and run with the shotgun out. They might die fountains. Palos, he's going in. Onto Zenki. Can he get another? He'd love the Morphling, and it looks like he might have the opportunity to take his life away. They'll oh. topple. It won't be enough. Palos is going all the way in. Onto Prince, and they'll find another. A full team wipe. GG. Omega, they've seen enough. That is a rough one. That is very rough for the side of Omega. And that's a 0-4 for them. OB Neon, they play spectacularly well in both games. They managed to overwhelm Omega. They had the answers for the Morphling. They had the answers for the team fights coming through from Omega as well. And Neon just managed to make it work their way. They got the PL pick. There's no counter pick from Omega. They had no Ember choice left. They only had a puck. And it's not the direct counter to a PL anyway. So they managed to get that going. For Omega's part, I don't think this game was the best showing in their laning phase. It wasn't quite the strongest lanes. We saw Prince just, you know, constantly get free farm. At the same time, Enry, you got all his timings because they got the creep cuts every single time. I think that's just enabled that ridiculously fast Ags rush on Enryu. For Omega, again, the seeds of potential are there. We have seen it in their previous series where their early game goes spectacularly well. Even in game one, it was sort of showing again. But just the late game when everything's down to the wire, when you have to play to the knife's edge, and that experience still needs tempering in. And they don't find any win today, but I think going forward, you can expect this team to keep growing, keep learning. Obiniando going to be very satisfied with a 2-0 here. Oh, absolutely. Bright news, or rather good news as well, John, is we're not going to have too long of a break here for our next series. It's only going to be a 10-minute break uh, before we do start our next series, and that is going to be between Army Geniuses and Execration. So we're going to head off to that 10-minute break, and right after that, we'll be back with our third series of the night. See you then.